If you want a simple way to stand out as a great developer, find a way to make something run faster. And in the SQL world, a great way to do this is by incorporating what's called indexes. But I know from personal experience that this topic can be a little bit confusing. So in this video, I want to break down the two primary types of indexes you'll come across so that you can feel more comfortable with this concept and start identifying places to implement them in your own database. So in simple terms, an index is really a lookup guide you can add to your table that helps your server more efficiently find the data that it wants. And the best way to think about this, I think, is through the example of a physical book. So in a book, if you want to go to a particular topic, you can go to the table of contents in the front uh, or flip to the very back and go to the index or the appendix. But without those guides, the process of finding a specific topic would take forever. We quite literally have to read through every single page in here just to find whatever it is we're looking for. So in a similar fashion, we can help our query engines be way more efficient in finding specific records instead of pages by providing these indexes. So the two main types of indexes are known as clustered and non-clustered. And so we'll cover each of them now. A clustered index defines the order in which data is physically stored in a table. If we go back to the book example, this is the equivalent of saying that the book's content is physically ordered by page number. It's not ordered by letter, it's not ordered by date or anything else, it's ordered by page number. So with that, we can quickly assume it starts at page one and the last page of the book is going to be the highest number. In the data world, this typically looks like an auto incrementing ID value, although it doesn't have to be. So if you're trying to find an ID value of let's say 257 in a table of a million records, if there's a clustered index on ID, the query engine can quickly make some assumptions on, on kind of what this data looks like and more efficiently hone in on where this record lives in the table. So as a rule of thumb, every table should uh, usually have a clustered index to give it a sense of order. Even if the data visually looks like it's in an order, unless you explicitly set a clustered index, then in the eyes of the query plan, there is no order. Tables without any order like this are what's called a heap. And these types of tables will require that scenario of reading every single row to find the data it wants. This typically means more computation and ultimately longer processing times. A final thing to note here is when you add a primary key to a table, which is common, this will also add a clustered index by default. So while a clustered index sorts the physical data and is essentially part of the table itself, a non-clustered index is stored completely separate and acts as more of a reference guide. So back again to our book example, I think of it similar to the appendix in the back of the book, it helps you find the location of something based on a topic. But again, the key difference here is that this type of index does not determine the physical order of the table itself. It's just a lookup, it's just a reference. You can almost think of a non-clustered index as a completely separate version of the table in, in a way but just with the columns that you are deciding to include. And like a book, this type of index is also going to include the pointers to the associated real table records, so that actual ID that you need to find. So now when a query is run, it's first going to look in this index for that value you're looking for and be able to find all associated real table records. And after that, it's gonna to go to the real table and fetch that record and all other associated columns that are with it. And this may seem like a lot of hopping around, but again, Think about this compared to a table with absolutely no reference or no declared order. And then finally here, because this type of index is stored separately, it's possible to have multiple non-clustered indexes, multiple columns on a single table. Unlike with a clustered index where there can only be one physical order, so one clustered index. Now, database engines are designed to work with indexes and with the right tweaks you can see some serious benefits, but it's also possible to have the complete opposite effect if you're not careful. So here are a few things to consider before you go just start blindly throwing indexes on every column in all of your tables. First, when talking about clustered indexes, it's typically best practice to add them to a unique column or any other column where the value is increased for each new entry. Again, think of like a page number going up. You also don't wanna add it on a value that's gonna be changed often. That's because on a clustered index, any change column or any that's added out of order, is gonna require the whole table to be reordered so that the proper index remains intact. So this is going to negatively impact your performance. Second, for non-clustered indexes, 
think about some of the common joins you have in a query or a procedure. Because if you're routinely looking for the same values, this could be a good candidate for a non-clustered index because it'll help that engine quickly find those common values. But also remember that non-clustered indexes require that subtle extra hop. So you don't wanna to get too carried away either with adding these all over the place. Lastly, indexes are separate entities in your database and will need to be maintained and monitored. So make sure your team or your DBAs, whoever are aware of what you're adding, and why you feel will help. You don't wanna add indexes just on a whim, only to find out that some of the previously mentioned scenarios, you know, they start to flare up, cause query performances to start going the wrong direction. Let me know in the comments if you've used indexes in the past and the type of results you've seen. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next week.